Welcome to lesson 15, where we are going to be learning a bit more about the lighting and rendering workflows in Katana. As you can see here, I prepared a very basic starting point for us to begin lighting from. You can also start from the same point by using the lighting template Katana script I've included with the course. Let's take a brief look at what we have. I've got the assets imported as usual, and the hierarchy names have also been set to what we had in the previous lessons. I've also pruned the same unwanted locations as before. Here we have the same interactive render filters we've used in the previous lessons and we will continue to use them as we light this scene. We have a gaffer 3 node with no lights in it, as we will be setting this up from scratch. And finally, we have the same render settings backdrop with the same nodes as before. It might be fairly obvious to you that this lighting template is just a stripped down version of what we had built in the previous lessons. But what happened to all those materials? Before you are tempted to copy all the materials and material assignments from a previous lesson, remember that we are simulating a production environment. While copying them will work, it is not an effective workflow for a lighting artist who will be unfamiliar with all the materials and its assignments. But as we have baked all that information into a KLF, the lighting artist wouldn't have to worry about all that, and we will shortly look at how to use that. But before we do that, let's get some lighting in the scene. Set the edit flag on the gaffer 3 node. At this point, we just want to have a light so that we can see the assets in the render. So I'll just click on the Gaffer 3 interface and create a Pixar dome light. Now let's launch a preview render. Now that we can see the assets, let's look at how we can use the look files we made in the last lesson. There are two ways to assign a look file. We can directly assign it within the importomatic node or use a look file assign node. I'll assign it within the importomatic. Set the edit flag on the importomatic node. Right click on the asset and choose assign look file. Let's browse to the look file we saved in the last lesson. You can see that the assets.klf has been added under the asset in the importomatic interface. Select assets.klf. You can see that it has been automatically assigned to the same scene graph location specified in the imported assets name parameter. Next, select the assets scene graph location and switch over to the attributes tab. We can see that the look file has been added as an attribute, but unlike material resolution, look files are not automatically resolved at render time. Press tab and search for look file resolve and place this node in the node graph. The look file resolve node resolves all the look file attributes at the scene graph locations that exist at this point. There is a more powerful version of this node called the look file manager, but we will not be using that in this course. While nothing seems to have changed at this point, Let's expand to the treehouse scene graph location. Expand the collections group and we can see all the collections we previously made. If we toggle the active state of the look file resolve node, we can confirm that the collections are created by the look file. But what about all the shaders? Let's launch another preview render. And as you can see, we have all the materials available to us, except the tree group, which if you remember from the last lesson, I've chosen to ignore this asset for the course. I'll create another prune node to remove this tree location and launch another preview render. And we can see that all the materials have transferred over correctly. We are now ready to start working on the lighting. I will start by selecting a better camera angle to base the lighting in the shot. The asset already has a camera included with it that works very well, so I'm simply going to swap to this camera. Expand to the render cam location and set the edit flag on the render settings node. To select the new camera, middle click and drag this into the camera parameter on the render settings node. Since we have pruned the tree asset, I have created a backdrop to base the lighting on by combining a few different royalty free images I found online. I have included this backdrop image with this course, but feel free to use something else to suit the mood of the lighting you want to achieve. In order to bring this image into Katana, I will have to apply it to a simple geometry. Katana has the toolset to create basic geometry that you can use for this very purpose or even as light blockers. Press tab and type PC. Choose primitive create and let's place this in the node graph. I'll place it inside the assets backdrop and rename this to backdrop. Set the edit flag on it. In the name parameter, I will change the location name to backdrop. And in the type parameter, set this to polyplane. Let's connect this node to the existing merge node. If you look at the viewer, you can see a small plane has been created. We now need to create a new material to assign a texture to this. I'll fast forward through this bit as the process is the same as before, except I'm using a Pixar constant shader instead of a Pixar surface this time. 
The Pixar constant shader is unlit, which means that the shading does not rely on the lighting at all, which in this case is ideal. After assigning the material to the backdrop location, let's start a live render this time as we will have to position this interactively. Let's expand some of the assets location for reference. I'll pin them so they will stay visible in the viewer. Select the backdrop in the scene graph and use the scale, transform and rotate tools to find a position that looks good for you. I will fast forward through this. And this is what I have. I have moved the camera using the transform 3D node and you can see that I've created a PR man camera settings node. Set the edit flag on it. I have disabled the camera's field of view and attached a Pixar camera projection shader with a very narrow field of view to get us what we have here. If you toggle the active state of the node, you can see that the camera angle shifts quite a bit based on the projection shader's field of view. You can choose not to do this if you want, but the Pixar camera projection shader will give you finer control over your depth of field including bokeh effects and various other lens effects. With the background set, we now have a starting point to base our lighting on. Set the edit flag on the GAFA 3 node. I've prepared an HDRI that I've downloaded from Polyheaven. I painted out the bright lights since I do not want any strong light contribution from the HDRI. As the focus of this course is not the creative aspects of lighting, you don't have to follow along the exact placements of any of the lights I make, but as always, you can refer to the included katana recipe for the exact position values. Based on the backdrop, we have two sources of motivated lighting we can add to the scene. The first one is the cool light from the top, and the second one is the strong warm light from the bottom. Since this is a nighttime environment, we will have a third source of light from within the treehouse itself. I'm going to expand the light rig location and select the HDRI and press the E key. I'll rotate the HDRI until I find a position that makes the lighting on the assets feels like it belongs in the same environment as the backdrop. Next, I will start by creating a warm light from inside the treehouse. Let's zoom into the treehouse in the viewer and press the L key to enable lighting tools. I'll choose Pixar Rect Light from the drop-down menu and move the perspective camera inside the treehouse itself. Shift left click on the window frame to place the Pixar Rect light. Shift left clicking on any geometry when the lighting tools mode is active places the light depending on the lighting mode that is active. By default, the normal mode is active which places the light oriented to the normal of the geometry that you clicked on. You can hold Ctrl Shift while left clicking and dragging the mouse left or right to scale the light up and down. Or you can just hold the Ctrl key and left click and drag left or right to move the light closer or further away from the geometry. The intensity of the light is linked to the scale of the light itself. So you can see that as you scale up the light, it gets brighter. The scale of the light also controls the softness of the shadow from that light, with larger lights casting softer shadows. I don't want to link the intensity of the light to the scale of the light in this case. So I will expand the advanced tab on the light and click on normalize. You can now scale the light as much as needed without changing the intensity of it. But note that the shadow will continue to become soft as you increase the size of the light. I'll rename this light to key underscore interior. I'll set the exposure of the light to 9. I'll also enable the color temperature checkbox and set the temperature to 2800. Next, I'll add another light from the top to continue matching the lighting to our backdrop. In the perspective view, Move around until you find the position you will like the light to be created. I'll set the exposure to 15 and change the color to a cooler blue color. Now let's look at some examples of problems you might have to tackle in the production scene. Let's assume that we really like the light falling on the giant hand and the present box, but not the treehouse. There are several ways we can solve this, but one of the commonly used solutions in production is light linking. Light linking enables us to exclude certain geometry from being affected by that specific light. Select the light in the GAFA3 interface. Next, switch to the linking tab. In the light linking area, there are three main parameters we want to look at, and these are the initial state and the cell parameter labeled on and off. The initial state is set to on by default which means that all geometry will be affected by this light, and any geometry you want to exclude can be added to the off cell widget. This is ideal when you want the light to affect most of the geometry, except a few locations. 
In our case, we want to exclude the whole of the treehouse and have the light affect just the hand and the present box. So in this case, we would be better off by setting the initial state to off and just adding the locations we need to the on cell widget. Set the initial state to off and as you can see, the light is now effectively disabled everywhere. Since we got the collections for free from the look file, instead of adding the specific locations, we can simply middle click and drag the collections into the on cell widget. I'll do this for the giant hand, the present box, and also the hand fur location. If you are viewing a live render, make sure to have the assets location included in the live render preview. As you can see, the light just affects the hand and the present box. The other common solution to the same workflow is a light filter. Let's clear the locations in the light linking tab and set the initial state back to on. Right click on the light and in add PR man light filter, choose Pixar blocker light filter. If you look at the scene graph, you can now expand the light location and we can see that a blocker light filter location is now available. The blocker is also visible in the viewer right next to the light which appears as a small sphere. Select the light filter in the GAFA interface and let's look at some of its parameters. I'll set the width, height and depth to 5. We can now just move the blocker over to the treehouse and rotate it into place and as you can see, the treehouse is blocked from this particular light. Unlike light linking, which removes a selected geometry completely, you can use the blocker to control the exact region you need in 3D space. There are several different light filters that ships with RenderMan, and I'd encourage you to refer to the RenderMan documentation for more information about the different light filters. I'll skip to the finishing point with the rest of the lighting setup, as this is a fairly iterative process, but you can refer to the included katana recipe for all the lighting setup. In the next lesson, we will look at examples of other common lighting workflows used in production, such as overriding lights, overriding existing materials, and finally, we will look at how to save the render to disk.